If you live in the UK and you're with Octopus Energy, you're spoiled for choice with the number of tariffs they offer. Two of these tariffs are Octopus Flux and Intelligent Octopus Flux. Which of these two tariffs are better for you? That's what we'll be looking at in this video. Hi, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. Octopus Energy in the UK launched their Octopus Flux tariff just over a year ago in February 2023. And shortly after I made this video about it because I felt at the time and still do today that it's a great tariff over the summer, both in terms of helping the environment and saving you money. I say saving you money, but actually the tariff is so lucrative it can actually make you money. Then in July last year, Octopus released a sister tariff to Octopus Flux called Intelligent Octopus Flux. And when I looked at the details for this new tariff, I just couldn't get my head around it. And although I met the eligibility requirement, having the right solar and battery equipment, there wasn't much summer left to give the tariff a proper try. So I thought I would come back to it later. And later is now. In this video then, we'll be looking at the differences between Octopus Flux and Intelligent Octopus Flux. As a recap then, Octopus Flux is what I would describe as a template tariff with different energy rates depending on the time of day. There's an off-peak period between 2 and 5 a.m. in the morning and a peak period between 4 and 7 p.m. in the early evening. Here are the rates for electricity imported from the grid at these times. These rates are from the 1st of April and they may vary slightly depending on where you live in the UK. This tariff also pays for electricity exported to the grid Again, these rates may vary depending on the time of day. The tariff has been designed so that electricity is cheaper when it is cleanest and more expensive when it's dirtiest, meaning mainly being generated by burning fossil fuels. And for those of you with solar and battery, you can save a lot of money or even make money by charging your battery with cheap energy in the early morning and also with solar generation during the day, then exporting energy throughout the day, especially in the early evening, at the highest export rate. If you want to get the best from this tariff, you'll be interested in this video I made where I analyse the best strategy for Octopus Flux, which is used as an example in the video. OK, that's Octopus Flux. Let's now take a look at Intelligent from Octopus Flux so you can see the differences. The first difference is that Intelligent Octopus Flux doesn't have an off-peak period. Well, I say that, but actually everything that is not the peak period is now called the off-peak period. In essence, then, there are only two periods now, rather than the three for Octopus Flux. The next difference is that the export rates are now the same as the import rates. That certainly took me by surprise when I first found this out, and later we'll look into what that means when using the tariff, including infinitely sized batteries. The next difference is that the rates are slightly lower than for Octopus Flux. And again, these rates are from the 1st of April onwards. So there you have it, Intelligent Octopus Flux. Actually, we're not quite there yet. There's one final difference, and it's a big one. Normally, you're in control of when your battery charges and discharges. And for Octopus Flux, you might typically set your battery to force charge during the off-peak period and to force discharge during the peak period. But Intelligent Octopus Flux is different from other smart tariffs supplied by Octopus Energy in that you're required to hand over control of your battery to Octopus Energy. At present, only Give Energy batteries are supported, but other manufacturers' products are expected to be added over time. Now, handing over control of your battery to a third party is a big deal, and I talk about the implications of that in this video here, if you'd like to understand more about it. As to whether you're happy about handing over control or not is a personal decision, all I'd say on that is that it comes down to whether you trust the third party in question to do the right thing. And in the case of Octopus Energy, I personally do. By the way, if you're getting a lot out of my videos and you'd like to support my channel, there's an easy way for you to do that. In my opinion, Octopus Energy is by far the best energy provider in the UK. And if you switch to them using my referral code here, you'll get £50 credited to your account. I'll also receive £50, and this goes a long way to keeping the channel going. A huge thank you to everyone who supported me in this way so far. So why did Octopus Energy design Intelligent Octopus Flux in this way? And is it better for you than the original Octopus Flux? To accurately address this question, we need to analyse the tariff in more detail so that we can determine the implications of each of its features. 
And at this point, I'd like to give a shout out to TerraVault, who has a fantastic website providing detailed real-time charts and data on the UK's energy mix. On their website, TerraVault publishes an in-depth analysis of Intelligent Octopus Flux, and I'll be making reference to parts of that analysis later in this video. I'll put a link to TerraVault in the description. Let's start by considering the symmetrical import and export rates. What does that mean in reality? Well, this is described as a net metering tariff in some countries, where the energy is priced at the same whether you import or export it through your meter. It essentially means that the grid acts as an infinitely sized battery. You can put as much energy as you like into it by exporting to the grid, and then take back that same amount of energy later by importing it from the grid, and it won't have cost you a penny to do any of that. Actually, it's even better than a real battery in a couple of ways. First, when you put energy into a real battery, you lose about 10% of that energy when you take it back out again through conversion losses. With a grid battery, there are no conversion losses. And second, with a real battery, if you're consuming energy at a higher rate than the battery can output, you'll be drawing from the grid. But with a grid battery, there is essentially no limit to the output rate. But the game-changing advantage of an infinitely sized battery is that it solves one of the biggest issues with solar in the UK, and indeed many other countries. Let me explain. Here is a chart showing the expected monthly solar generation from a property in the UK with a 6 kilowatt peak south-facing array. If we layer on the average monthly electricity usage for that same property, you can see that during the summer months there is far more solar generation than we need, and during the winter months there is not enough solar generation. A home battery can typically only store perhaps a day's worth of solar generation before it is full, but an infinitely sized battery can easily store several months or even a year's worth of solar generation. And this has the effect of smoothing out the monthly solar generation like so, in this case providing sufficient energy to cover usage every single month of the year. You're able then to make a determination if Intelligent Octopus Flux is going to work for you by comparing your annual electricity usage with the annual expected solar generation from your array. And that means with this example, aside from the cost of your solar and battery installation, electricity for this property is free for the entire year. How cool is that? You can use an online utility like PVGIS to calculate this. It's not the most user-friendly utility though, so I created this video which explains how to use it well. And if you're signed up to my Patreon, you get access to this online utility I developed, which is not only very easy to use, but allows you to enter details of up to three solar arrays on your property, each with a different size, orientation and pitch. With that, the utility shows the total expected annual solar generation, as well as the relative contribution from each array across the months. All you need to do then is compare the total annual solar generation figure with your annual electricity usage. If you'd like to sign up for my Patreon, you can do that here. Going back to the tariff profile again, there is of course one thing to watch out for, and that's the peak period. There's no advantage if you're exporting energy at the off-peak rate only to buy it back at the higher peak rate. So ideally you need to avoid importing energy during the peak rate altogether. And this is where your own battery comes into play. And it's also where Octopus Energy helps you out. Remember, Octopus Energy is controlling your home battery with this tariff. And by examining TerraVolt data, it looks like that any time between 7pm through to 4pm the next day, Octopus Energy will instruct your home battery to force charge from whatever level it's at all the way up to 100%. Now that charging is not constant throughout all that time as shown here. Your home battery might only be instructed to force charge when the energy is at its cleanest or if there is limited sunshine to fill the battery otherwise. And the charging rate can vary too. And of course, not forgetting, your battery may also charge using any excess solar generation at the time. Your battery is also instructed during that time not to discharge to meet home demand. Instead, that demand is always met from the grid. In other words, your other battery. Then at 4pm, again looking at the TerraVolt data, Octopus Energy will typically instruct your home battery to force discharge all the way down to 20%. It's 20% at the moment, but the terms and conditions for Intelligent Octopus Flux do allow that value to be changed in the future. Now what's important to note here is that whilst your home battery is discharging, 
as well as exporting energy, it will also be meeting all home demand at the same time, and that means you'll avoid having to import at the peak rate. A couple of other important points then. It helps to have a battery capacity large enough to cover your expected usage during the peak period. Particularly 80% of your capacity should be greater than your expected usage at that time. And be careful that you're not drawing more power than your home battery can output during the peak period. If your home draws more power than your home battery's discharge rate, you'll be importing the extra from the grid at the peak rate. Now it might seem counterintuitive to have a large battery when you're on this tariff, as it already provides you with an infinitely large battery. But actually it doesn't hurt, and that's because Octopus Energy will be paying you the difference between the peak export rate and the off-peak import rate, an arbitrage if you like. And this is currently around 7 pence per kilowatt hour, less 10% to account for conversion losses. Not bad. In closing then, a few thoughts on Intelligent Octopus Flux. Why did Octopus Energy launch this tariff when Octopus Flux was already a great tariff? A couple of reasons maybe. It's more suitable for the mass market, as there's no manual control required. Octopus does it all for you. And if you think about it, the tariff enables Octopus Energy to manage a large-scale virtual power plant. Check out my battery video here to understand more about VPPs. Now when's the best time to switch to Intelligent Octopus Flux? It's actually now as we head towards the summer. This allows your energy account to build up enough of a buffer to get you through the winter. And does this tariff still make sense if you have an EV, or if you have a heat pump, or both? I think it might if you have a very large array, but again only if your annual consumption is less than your expected annual solar generation. So you'd need to include your expected EV charging and your heat pump energy requirement into your annual consumption figures. I'll be further developing my utilities on Patreon to provide an annual view shortly, but in the meantime, I know that Tim on Tim and Cat's Greenwalk channel has just released a video that compares a range of octopus tariffs, including Flux, Intelligent Flux, Go and Intelligent Go, over a full year. And finally, a big thank you again to TerraVolt for all the analysis that they provided. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you very soon.